Welcome to E3 Rehab. I'm Dr. Mark Sertica, physical therapist. In today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you all about the vastus medialis obliquus, or VMO. The quadriceps, as the name implies, consists of four different muscles. The vastus medialis on the inside of the thigh, the vastus lateralis on the outside of the thigh, the vastus intermedius deeper in the middle of the thigh, and then the rectus femoris sits right over the top. All four muscles insert on the tibial tuberosity via the patellar tendon and act to extend or straighten the knee. In fact, they are the only muscles that have this action. The rectus femoris also flexes the hip because its proximal attachment crosses this joint. The vastus medialis is then often divided into the vastus medialis longus, or VML, and the vastus medialis obliquus, or VMO, based on its distinct orientation of its muscle fibers. However, based on a systematic review by Smith and colleagues, the vastus medialis is likely best thought of as a single anatomical structure, although it does have differences in fiber alignment between the proximal and distal portions of the muscle, and in some cases, a separation by a fibrofascial plane and two nerve branches from the femoral nerve. In the rehab world, the VMO became very popular in the treatment of patellofemoral pain because the thought was that patellar malalignment or maltracking was contributing to wear and tear of the patella, leading to pain and dysfunction. So, in order to treat this, the things pulling laterally on the patella, like a quote-unquote tight IT band, had to be released, while the things pulling medially, like the VMO, needed strengthening and neuromuscular re-education. This theory hasn't panned out. Taping does not change the alignment of the patella. Females with patellofemoral pain have shown to get better without any change in how their patella is tracking. Atrophy of the quads in individuals with patellofemoral pain isn't unique to the VMO. Intramuscular quadriceps coordination between symptomatic and asymptomatic individuals isn't significantly different, and trying to do specific VMO retraining versus general quadriceps strengthening doesn't make a difference in the long run. And a lot of this is based on trying to find and change a 10 millisecond difference in activation of the VMO. That's 0.01 seconds. One, who cares? And two, it's this chicken or egg scenario, right? Did this 10 millisecond difference lead to their pain or is their pain contributing a bit to how they move? Also, a lot of these exercises in physical therapy aimed at retraining the VMO are extremely low level. Body weight squat with ball squeeze between the knees, body weight squat with band around the knees, a wall sit with the ball squeeze, glute bridge with the ball squeeze, or a straight leg raise with the hip externally rotated. If your goal is to get back to higher levels of function, exercises eventually need to be a lot more challenging. To close the case on VMO-specific training for patellofemoral pain, Smith and colleagues state, it is therefore recommended that clinicians should not focus on VMO strengthening since it likely cannot be preferentially activated. So what about performance or aesthetics? Right? Bodybuilders want to have that nice teardrop on the inside of their thigh. Bodybuilders don't just pick one exercise to train their lats. Instead, they have a rotation of several exercises because muscles might respond differently to different ranges of motion, rep ranges, contraction types, etc. And how we perform an exercise might make a difference. For example, Nunez and colleagues concluded that head-specific muscle hypertrophy may be obtained for the gastrocnemius based on the foot positioning of the participants. And the exercises we choose can make a difference. Schoenfeld et al. reported that the hamstrings can be regionally targeted through exercise selection. It matters if you're doing a lying leg curl versus a stiff-legged deadlift. The rectus femoris doesn't respond well to compound exercises that involve simultaneous hip and knee extension, which I talked about in our reverse Nordic video. 
as I already mentioned, there's not any good research that shows that we can preferentially activate the VMO or that it would make a difference in the long run. Chris Beardsley does suggest that larger ranges of motion may cause slightly more vastus medialis growth due to longer working sarcomere lengths and stretch mediated hypertrophy. So what's my main takeaway? Whether it's for pain, performance, or aesthetics, you shouldn't be focusing on trying to strengthen or re-educate the VMO because it's likely not possible to isolate or preferentially activate. Patellofemoral pain responds to comprehensive hip and knee strengthening, and including a variety of exercises is likely best for performance and aesthetics as well. There are a lot of compound and isolation, weight-bearing and non-weight-bearing exercises to choose from, including single leg step-downs, split squats, back squats, heel elevated squats, sissy squats, reverse Nordics, leg extensions, etc. Be consistent, use a large range of motion, and incorporate progressive overload and the vastus medialis will get worked plenty. All right, thank you so much for watching. Please help us out with this YouTube algorithm. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave any questions or comments down below. You can also make sure to check out that reverse Nordic video if you wanna learn more about the quads and how to train the rectus femoris. Thanks for watching, peace.